Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 tips and tricks for getting along with ExpressLRS. Unless you've been hiding under a rock lately, you know ExpressLRS is an up and coming protocol for RF tech, and I'm gonna show you 10 little tips and tricks on using it better and more efficiently on your radio. We'll start out by pressing the system button and then express LRS Lua. And you'll notice on the very first line next to my packet rate, which I have set for 333 Hertz, I've got a value that says negative 105 dBm. That negative 105 dBm represents receiver sensitivity given the parameters I've selected with my express LRS Lua configuration. So negative 105, that's as far as I can go. What we wanna do is add 10 of that. So we're gonna raise that number up and we use negative 95 as our RSSI alert level. I'll show you how to configure this alert on your radio now by backing out of the Express LRS Lua script, pressing the model button, and then going over to logical switches. And we're gonna set up a value, pick any logical switch you want. In my case, I want number six. And we're gonna use A is less than X. The value I want, the telemetry value is one RSS, and I'm gonna use negative 95. Remember, that's plus 10 for my high sensitivity limit, which is negative 105. Notice I also put a delay in of two seconds, and that's to prevent any momentary lapses beyond this value from triggering my alert. The next thing we'll do is create a special function based on logical six, and I'm gonna have that play a track called RSSIC. I've got RSSIC and A, so that's critical and alert, both in my Discord server under the Emily request channel, if you'd like to download these for yourself. And then I have a play that alert every three seconds. So now when I'm near the range of my RSSI on this radio, I'm gonna go ahead and play RSSIC as my alert. So on my radio, I'll play this alert when I reach negative 95 decibels, which is 10 above my critical level at 105 based on the configuration in Express LRS. All right, the next tip involves Express LRS settings. If you have several different craft using Express LRS, you may have different settings for them. In some cases, you might use a packet rate of 333, and others you might use a packet rate of only 150, and you want those settings to travel with the model. The way to do that is by using model IDs. Now, that's not the same thing as model match. Notice in the model match configuration, I have that off, but I have an ID value of one. All that means is that on my model settings, I use an ID of one in the receiver setup, and I'll show you that by pressing model and scrolling up until we get to the bottom of the configuration page, and you can see I've got receiver value set to one. So by using a receiver ID, there's certain parameters that are saved by Express LRS per model. They include the packet rate, telemetry ratio, switch mode, model match, max power, and dynamic power. To continue on with tricks using the receiver ID, if you highlight the receiver ID and press the jog dial and scroll, you can see the packet rate from Express LRS changing depending on receiver ID that you use. So in this case, number three uses 500 hertz, number two uses 100, and number one uses 333. One more trick with receiver IDs. Let's say you have a group of planes that use 333 hertz. They're using eight channel PWM mode and you have a standard telemetry ratio. In that grouping of planes, if you set them all to ID number one, every time you load that model up, it'll load this ELRS profile up. Likewise, if you use receiver ID number two, all of your planes that use that number two in the receiver configuration will have 100 hertz full, standard telemetry rate, eight channels. So the idea is that you can use these receiver IDs to create templates within ELRS. You can put all your fixed wing 3D planes at 333 hertz by using ID number one. You can put all your sport planes using PWM eight channel and ID number two. Maybe you put all your quads with ID number three. And that way you don't have to worry about creating individual ELRS settings for every single airframe type that you fly. Next up is the telemetry ratio. Unless you know exactly how you want your telemetry to come in, you can trust the Express LRS developers to probably have figured out the best answer. And the real simple thing is just set it on standard. And when you set it on standard, anytime you change your packet rate, the telemetry ratio will change with it, depending on what's best for the receiver and transmitter and the packet rate setting that you chose. My next tip involves ELRS receivers, which have the ability to connect your home Wi-Fi based on your SSID and your password. The problem is that sometimes, even though you have the ability in configurator to enter your SSID and your password, it doesn't always connect. But here's what I found out. If you go into the web UI and you re-enter your SSID and password and hit confirm, 
It seems to always connect after that, at least on version 3.0 or higher. So if you're having problems connecting to your SSID with your receiver, connect to the AP mode, load up the web UI, and re-enter your SSID and password and hit confirm. And after that, it should connect to your home network every time. The next tip involves setting your telemetry alarms correctly based on what Express LRS is feeding the radio and where the alerts are coming from. To make it real simple, go into your telemetry page and set your low alarm to 75 and your critical alarm to 65. I have it on good authority that these values will change in the future and we'll be able to use a more realistic or more accurate number of 80 and 70, but for now this is going to be pretty close and it'll serve you well. So set your low alarm at 75 and your critical alarm at 65. These two fields are using receiver link quality, so they are the correct numbers to use. Unfortunately, the limit on edge is 75 on the high end and 12 on the low end. We don't really care about that. Right now, the best option to use is 75 and 65, and those report link quality or the number of good versus drop packets on the receiver. So these are the values you want. They're the best you can do. All right, unless you fly very long range, go into your TX power and set your max power to about 250 milliwatts, set dynamic power to on. You can always change it if you want to, but there's really no need to do it. These guys are flying 250 milliwatts for 40 kilometers away. So if you're flying line of sight, you just don't need to go any higher than that. Of course, if it makes you happy to go higher, then go ahead, but you just don't need to do it. 250 milliwatts is just fine. Just make sure you set it on dynamic power. So that way, if the radio sees a link quality in RSSI condition, which warrants more power, Express LRS will just bring the power up automatically for you. And it can do it way faster than you can. So leave it to the radio. Okay, the next tip involves packet rate. You notice on my current settings, I'm using 333 Hertz, and that gives me a sensitivity level of negative 105 dBm. The thing about it is that unless you have digital servos or if you're a twitchy race pilot, you're never gonna notice this 333 hertz rate. So go ahead and drop your packet rate down to 100. And the truth is most analog servos operate at 50 hertz anyway. So this refresh rate is twice as fast as your servo works and most of the standard receivers out on the market, they operate around 100 hertz as well. So if you've been out there flying Spectrum or FlySky or FreeSky or any of that other standard, protocol stuff that's been out there, you're not going much faster than this anyway. My final tip also has to do with packet rate and range. Notice at 333 hertz, I'm at negative 105 dBm. If I lower this value to 100 hertz, my dBm is gonna change because that's the way RF physics work. The thing I wanna point out is that for every six dBm gain, you double your range. So watch what happens when I click enter. We're gonna go from negative 105 all the way to negative 112. That's a seven dBn gain, which means I effectively doubled my range just by slowing down my packet rate a little bit. All right, guys, that wraps up my video for tips and tricks on Express LRS. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.